that in turn helps pass the enjoyment on to other people. Because they come and they see your tree and they say, oh, that's lovely, you know, and there you are helping out by, uh, you know, serving a, a term watching over the trees. And they say, do you know about this tree? And you say, yes, actually, that's my tree. And then they ask you questions, and then you fill them in on how you did it and everything, and it keeps the ball rolling. That's the value of showing trees, to engage other people, to help share what you enjoy with them. So again, speaking for myself, winning well, a, an so award answer, is never a motivation. So the answer I'm hearing about like criteria for judging is mostly just what aesthetically the judge is like. That's all it is. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, I know. So I go yeah. and do. Well, see that that takes the pressure off. Yes. To to a feeling that oh my God I'm doing it wrong. No. If it's all about me and how I feel about my tree. Then That's right. It's fine. That's all it is. Okay. Anybody who tells you otherwise, just laugh knowingly and walk away. <laughs> I can do that. That's all it's about. I mean, let's keep it real. What are we talking about? We're growing little trees. That's all it is. <laughs> little trees in fancy pots. It's not a solution to any of the world's great problems. But it's enjoyable, right? And things that people can do to generate enjoyment that doesn't hurt anybody else, right? And could possibly help other people find enjoyment. That's worthwhile. That's a good thing to spend your time doing. How I look at it. And when it comes to judging, my main feeling about judging is I try never to be in a position to have to do it. <laughs> but sometimes I am. You know, sometimes it's expected. So you go and, you know, you're at a show and people want the trees judged, so okay, I'm going to judge. And I always tell people beforehand, it's just my opinion. It's just what I like. You know, you have some other judge here, they're going to pick something else because they have a different opinion, different taste. This is stretching too long here, right? And it's very strong. Too, too long. So, you know, take that out like that. And hopefully we'll get something that kind of grows up into this space. That would be better. I guess it makes you wonder what came first, judge or judgment? I don't know. I know that it's built into us as a species to be very judgmental. Do you, do you always like to trim on a dolly so you can turn it to get perspective? Yes, yes. Very useful, you know? Because here's another thing, personal preference. One time, I, I was in uh, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee Bonsai Club, right? They had me come there and they wanted me to do a workshop. And it was working with uh, American hornbeams. And you know what, the, know what the trees look like? I can show you. They, they kind of looked like this, <laughs> right? Only not as tall. And they had like one or two really weak branches. That was it. That was their, that was their material for their workshop. Well, you got to work with what's put in front of you, right? So. Starting off the workshop, I say, I'm going to walk around. And I'd be interested to hear from each of you what you think about the plant you're working on. <laughs> and every single person said, I think this is the front. <laughs> right? And they would turn the stick one way or another. Like, yeah, this is my front. How do you know? <laughs> you know? How do you know that's the front? Well, they were taught that's the first thing that you do. You want to make a bonsai? Find the front. It's the last thing. The last thing you do is find the front. The first thing you do is build a tree, right? What do you need for a tree? You need a trunk. You need branching, right? Each branch has to have access to its own light so that one branch isn't out-competing another branch, causing that branch to grow weak and die. They have to be distributed in a way where they all get light. Then on top of that, they have to be distributed in a way that provokes a pleasing reaction from the person looking at it. Right? So, that works for me. When I look at this tree, I get a pleasing response out of viewing it. Because I'm looking at it and thinking about trees. And I think, oh, this is looking more and more tree-like. Every year this looks like more and more of a tree. Right? But in a bonsai context, there are lots of bonsai people who would look at this and say, oh, what a mess. 
What a mess, you know? You've got things all wrong here. What is this branch doing? Why is it going up like that? It should go out, down low. It's a whole branch. It needs to hang down and show how old it is. I don't know, right? Branches go up, branches go back, they go forward, they go down, they go up. Branches do whatever they have to do to get sunlight. That's how they work. It's only the human mind that determines this looks good, this looks bad. That's a matter of subjective opinion. And that's a changeable thing. What's the proof of that? Fashion is the proof of that. <laughs> See anybody dressing like the 70s anymore? No. But back then, ooh, that's cool. I like the way that looks. Well, you haven't been looking around lately, have you? Well, maybe it's come back. I don't. I pay no attention at all to fashion anymore. None whatsoever. Can't you tell? This is my fashion. I wear the team shirt, and that's it. And, and pants that are loose, that won't split when I bend over. <laughs> and that's my fashion, I'm covered. But I recognize not everybody thinks that way. It's fine. But when it comes to bonsai, fashion counts too. You hear people say, do it this way, you have to do it this way, this is the right way. If you don't do it this way, it's wrong. They're wrong. That's just fashion. Bonsai has fashion too. If you don't believe it, look at pictures of bonsai from the pre-war period. And see how they look. They don't look anything like they look now. Fashion. Things change. What's cool today is the epitome of uncool tomorrow. And if it sticks around long enough, it'll be cool again someday. Okay. So, so when will you wire this again? I don't know. I would like to not wire it. You know? Get carried away wiring things, especially maples, ficus. Lots of times I think you should never wire those things because it always goes badly. <laughs> they always get away and then get scarred. Well, I'm sure there are some people who manage to avoid that. But for me, they always end up being scarred. So maybe no wire today. I brought wire with me. I think any time you can spare an audience from watching somebody wire, it's a good thing. <laughs> yes. So when it's ready to go into its smallest pot, yes. what shape and style or whatever would you put it in? Probably an oval. An oval or a round. I like round pots more and more and more. If you put a plant in a round pot, you can show it any number of ways. If you put it into an oval pot, there are only two ways you can practically show it, unless you don't care that your pot is, is showing, you know, uh, long ways first or diagonally. Most folks don't feel comfortable with doing that. Okay. So, yes? Like a glaze, like a blue or a greenish color? Well, a glaze, but I wouldn't go into buying the pot with a preconceived idea. Rather, I would go to a place where pot vendors are and look at what they have and pick the pots I like the best and then bring them home and try to find the right trees to put in them. Every now and again, a, a custom order a pot from Ron Lang or, or Sarah Rain or somebody like that, send them a picture of the tree and say, this is the tree I want to pot up. What, what do you think? And then work with them, you know? They have ideas, see what they have to say. But as far as like looking for the exact right pot for this tree, it's tough. Usually any plant I grow will go through a succession of pots. It's in this pot this year, next year it'll be in a different pot, five years from now it'll be in another pot altogether. The trick with this is that after a while you've got angles and branches going everywhere, which is just right, just how trees really are. But then you want harmony. Right? If it's completely random and chaotic, then that isn't pleasing to look at. It feels uncomfortable to look at something that's random and chaotic. Right? That's why a lot of people don't like modern art. I can't stand Jackson Pollock. Right? <laughs> He's not modern anymore, but I don't like his work because it's so chaotic. I like things that are more organized, but not real organized. Right? Not Thomas Kincaid. I don't want things where it's just like a fairy tale, everything's settled out perfectly. Want somewhere in the middle, down that spectrum, between total chaos and total unity. Find something that has enough chaos to be interesting, but enough, enough 
composure to feel satisfying to look at. It's a great challenge. It's a great challenge to do bonsai that way. You know, you put this much time into something, right? However many years it is now, 20 something years. I mean, it's very dejecting to step back and look at it and say, you know what? That stinks. <laughs> Why did I do that? So I don't want to get to that place, you know? I want to look at it and say, that's a cool tree. If I found that tree in the forest, man, I'd take a hundred pictures of it. Because it, you know, it has character. It has movement. It's got uh, a dynamic feeling to it, right? So I feel that the randomness is reined in enough that it has unity and feels like a comprehensive whole. It's not chaos not a case of things just growing any which way. If it was, then I wouldn't have bored you for the last hour making decisions, you know? We'd just chop, chop, chop. There it is. It's done. Two what, things I'm, um, please. What environment does this tree normally live in? Indoors, outdoors? Oh, in never outdoors. indoors. Never indoors, because this is a temperate plant. It needs seasonal change. If you were to try to keep this in your house, you would kill it. Right? You can bring it in the house for a few days to show it off, like when it's in autumn color or something, but then it needs to go back outside. It needs to be in the elements, going through seasonal change, being dormant approximately half the year. As for sunlight, most maples appreciate a little bit of shade in the hottest part of the day. Right? So the most intense sunny part of the day, this tree ideally has some shade. Where it actually grows is a hoop house that we cover with a 50% shade cloth. So it's in the full sun all day, but under a 50% shade cloth. If, if you're growing it at home, you might position it so that it gets morning sun, but then by like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the shade of a tree or a building or something falls over it and it's not in full sun anymore. There are plants that can handle full sun. Maples typically are not among them. They don't handle it so well. Do you have any suggestions for getting some of these?